On February 19, 2005, Danielle Limbo and Richard Patrone Jr. exited a bar and restaurant called Abilene's and entered Patrone's black and silver four-door 2001 Dodge pickup truck, never to be seen again. This is considered to be one of Philadelphia's biggest mysteries due to there being almost zero clues in what friends would consider the on and off again couple's whereabouts. Danielle was 34 at the time of her disappearance and had recently gone for a divorce. She was employed as a loan processor for a mortgage company and spent most of her time with her young son at her home in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Richard was 35 at the time of his disappearance and worked at his family's bakery and lived in South Philadelphia. He had a 14-year-old daughter who primarily lived with him until she decided she wanted to live with her mother. Patron's daughter would state that Danielle was the first woman her father had been serious about and he was hurt when Danielle decided to take a break from the relationship, but he gave her space and the pair agreed to reunite on the night of February 19, 2005. The couple entered Abilene's arm in arm and met up with one of Richard's closest friends and his friend's wife. The friend noted that the pair seemed extremely happy and held hands as they listened to a live band that was playing at the bar. The couple would depart Abilene's at 11.30pm, they hugged their friends and promised to talk again soon. Their friends watched as the couple holding hands left the bar and into a crowded south street heading towards Richard's car. Danielle's brother John arrived at her home at around 9am the following day and got no response when he knocked on his sister's door. He tried calling her but it went straight to voicemail. He then called his mother who told him that Danielle was with Richard last night and that perhaps she stayed at his apartment. Richard's sister, Christine, who worked as a hairdresser, was expecting Danielle that morning, as she had an appointment and was known for always being on time, so when the clock hit 11am, Christine grew concerned and tried calling Danielle too, but again, it went to voicemail. She then attempted to call her brother, but it also went to voicemail. She informed her mother, and after many unsuccessful attempts at reaching her son, she called her sister, who lived close to Richard and asked if she would go to his apartment and check if everything was alright. Her sister knocked on the door several times and could hear Richard's dog barking but there was no sign of Richard. John returned to his sister's house so he could meet her ex-husband Joe who was dropping off their son. John informed Joe that Danielle had gone out with Christine and asked him to watch her son until she returned. John knew he had to notify police. As Danielle's son was the centre of her universe and there was no way she would have willingly missed being home when he was dropped off. Danielle's and Richard's families both contacted the Philadelphia Police Department to report them missing. Whilst they waited for police to begin their investigations, John met up with Richard Patron Sr. and the pair spent hours driving around Philadelphia looking for Richard's truck with no success. Police initially believed that the couple had simply decided to get away for a little and they would likely return after a few days, but friends and family members were adamant that Richard and Danielle would never voluntarily leave their children behind. They had stable jobs and came from close-knit families. Worried that the police weren't taking the disappearances seriously, friends and family members continued searching for their loved ones. They distributed flyers throughout downtown Philadelphia and hung up posters in motels and restaurants. Police had received numerous tips as a result of these efforts, no solid leads were developed. By helicopter, investigators searched the Delaware River in case the car had ended up in the water, but came up empty. They also obtained surveillance footage from every ATM on South Street in the hope that they could see the direction they headed when they left the club, but once again, they were unsuccessful. Police thought they finally had a break in the case when a burnt-out Dodge Dakota was discovered in Camden, New Jersey. It looked identical to Richard's truck, but a check on the VIN showed that it was a different truck, that had been stolen weeks earlier. A month after the disappearance, the families announced that they were offering a $50,000 reward for information. Billboards were placed alongside Interstate 95 in the Philadelphia area, and although more tips were received, investigators couldn't find anything credible. Although the families had been friends for decades, the stress associated with the disappearance of their loved ones became too much, and they soon started to argue. Danielle's family insinuated that Richard had gambling debts, whilst the Patrones seemed to believe that Danielle's ex-husband had targeted the couple. Police found nothing to support either theory, and did extensive background checks on the couple, and determined that neither one of them was involved in anything that might have led them to being targeted. 
Joe Imbo had threatened Richard in the past, and he had just gone through a divorce with Danielle. He has been interrogated numerous times by the police, and they found that he had a solid alibi for the night the couple went missing. He was miles away at a family party in New Jersey. Several police officers were also present and supported Joe's claims. Detectives admitted that the case baffled them from the start, and years have gone by and there has been no sighting of Richard's truck. Both cell phones have remained off, and bank accounts and credit cards haven't been used since the night of the disappearance. The FBI believes that Richard Patron Jr. and Danielle Limbo were the victims of a murder-for-hire plot that was carried out by a professional hitman, despite having found no evidence in the victim's background to suggest that they would be targets. Police also believe that this was not a random crime, and that the couple were specifically targeted, and admit that it is unlikely any trace of them or their truck will ever be found.